Brothers and sisters, welcome back to session seven of our eight part series on forming consciences for faithful citizenship, which is our bishop's document, helping us to prepare for the upcoming elections and for elections in the future. Uh, today, we're going to reflect on the, the church in politics uh, when it comes to applying our fully formed consciences to these issues of our society, the bishops remind us that we cannot just dismiss the church's guidance or policy directions. And we're called to listen, to be formed, to discern, and to act. The bishops tell us in paragraph number seven, participation in political life is in the light of fundamental moral principles, is an essential duty for every Catholic and every person of goodwill. We're called to act according to our best moral guidance. We're reminded that our political participation is based on principles, moral principles, not polls. The church reminds us that the church itself should not be used as a way of furthering one's political credentials. The church should be looked upon as a moral guide as we live our life, guided by scripture, tradition, natural law, and the virtues. The church itself is an ideological or partisan. Justice and charity are the core of our tradition. In his book, Exploring Catholic Theology, Bishop Robert Barron uses the work of the great Canadian Jesuit, Bernard Lonergan, to explain how we might approach these complex issues of life and politics. Forming consciences for faithful citizenship is a life long work for each of us. The issues of society change, the issues of our government changes, the issues local, state, and national change. And so as we go through elections, we're constantly called to continue this work of conscience formation. Bernard Lonergan and, and Bishop Barron suggest this to us. First, we should be attentive. To be attentive is to pay attention, to see, to attend to, to pray about, the issues that are present in our society. Second, to be intelligent. That is to look for and see biblical patterns. Biblical patterns are easy. They're sin and salvation. In our society, we find sin oftentimes, sometimes we find salvation, and then we repeat sin and salvation. So look for those patterns when we're dealing with particular issues. Third, to be reasonable. So attentive, intelligent, intelligent and reasonable, to discern the spirits and judge what is good, to spend time in prayer listening to how God is calling us to choose, and fourth, to be responsible, to do it, to act, to do the right thing in truth and love. And that is, in political participation, not only to vote, but how we discourse with one another about matters of our society, economics, and politics. The call of forming consciences for faithful citizenship is clear. It is for us to prepare to vote, not along party lines, but upon the lines of the gospel of Jesus Christ. St. Francis of Assisi says it so well. He said, the call of the Christian life is to follow the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that is it alone. And also then for us to reflect on those values as represented in sacred scripture, in tradition, and in our Catholic social doctrine. In the last section, We'll gather uh, again in order to look at how we might talk with our candidates, how we might ask them the questions that are important for us to be able to discern and indeed what is true, what is good, what is loving, and what is merciful as we approach this next election. If we do that, sisters and brothers, we may indeed be renewed. Please like, subscribe, and comment below. God bless you.